Shall we bow together? Lord, we thank you. And Lord, we praise your name. We thank you for the opportunity to come and to teach and to preach your word. Lord, we admit that we can do nothing until you come. Yes, sir. Amen. So bread of heaven, bread of heaven. Yes. Feed me, feed us till we want no more. We need a word from you. So please send it in his fullness and send it in his power. Take me out of self, dear God, and wrap me, tie me, and tangle me up in your spirit. So what I say to these, your people, let it be pleasing in your sight. Last but not least, allow the words of my mouth, the meditation of my heart, to be acceptable in thy sight, O oh Lord. For thou art my Christ, my Redeemer, my Lord, my Savior. Hallelujah. Most of all, I found you to be my friend. Yes. Yeah. If the Lord has blessed you with a voice, would you please repeat after me, Lord, send your word. Lord, send your word. When you send your word, send your word. I'll, believe it. I'll believe it. When you send your word, send your word. I'll, live I'll live by it. When you send your word, send your word. I'll, share I'll share it. In Jesus' name, and all of God's people said, Amen. Don't you dare try to fool me. How many of you are just glad to be alive? And in the house of our God, just one more time. Anybody here grateful for one more time? Hallelujah. I'm grateful for one more time. We honor the presence of the Lord and we are just delighted that the Lord would give us an assignment such as this to come and to encourage not just one location but many locations uh, that he would bring together the body of Christ. I want you to know how special that is when he decides to bring the head to the and the arms and the hands and the fingers and the feet and the legs together in order that he can strengthen and equip the body in order to go out. Can you give God praise for that tonight? <laughs> to Dr. Hill, to Pastor Lee, to Pastor Kenneth Dean, to our worship leader tonight, can we give Minister Goldsmith a wonderful God bless you. <laughs> to these choirs who have sung our souls happy on tonight. This praise team and choir who have blessed us. To all of the great men and women of God who are here tonight. I often say it's one thing to show up when it's your turn to preach, but it's another thing to show up when somebody else is holding the microphone. And so we're grateful for all of these great men and women of God who are in front of me, beside me, and behind me. And we're grateful tonight. Great to see Pastor Quarles here. And we're grateful to see you tonight. Then one of our neighboring pastors is here tonight, Pastor Tevin Smith from the Mount Olive Church right around the corner from Long Branch. Thank you so very much. Some of our members are here. Thank you, Long Branch, for coming and sharing. I believe I've said enough. Now let's go into the word of the Lord. Amen. Would you turn with me to 2 Kings chapter number 6. 2 Kings chapter number 6. To all of the ministers, spouses, God bless you tonight. Thank you for being not only a support, but a helpmate. To our host, Pastor, Pastor Gray and First Lady Andrea, God bless you tonight. Thank you for hosting us and having us here tonight. Amen. Amen. 
2 Kings chapter number 6. I want to read the first seven verses. Please forgive me for the length of passage, but I want us to get the full meaning and understanding of where the Lord has us going tonight. Yes, Reading from the New King James Version, it says, And the sons of the prophets said to Elijah, See now, the place, the place, the place where we dwell with you is too small. <laughs> For us, please let us go to the Jordan and let every man take a beam from there and let us make there a place where we may dwell. Yeah. So he answered, go. Then one said, please consent to go with your servants. And he said, I will go. So he went with them and when they came to the Jordan, they cut down trees. Yeah, they yeah. cut down trees. Yeah. But as one was cutting down a tree, the iron axe head fell into the water. Yeah. All right. And he cried out and said, Alas, master, for it was borrowed. So the man of God said, Where did it fall? And he showed him the place. So he cut off a stick and threw it in there. Here it is. And he made the iron float. Therefore he said, pick it up for yourself. So he reached out his hand and took it. <laughs> you may be seated in the presence of the Lord. I, I, want, I want to teach and preach tonight from the thought ministry expansion. Oh, yeah. Ministry expansion. Y'all going to help me preach. Yeah, 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 yeah. Can you just look at someone and say, neighbor, yeah. it's time to grow. It's time to grow. I don't know what you're talking about. Look at someone else and say, neighbor, oh neighbor, the word from the Lord is expansion. That's what I want to deal with tonight. If you believe that, can you put those hands together? Pastor Dean, there's no doubt in my mind that many of us have been faced with this issue of being stagnant. A place where you look at things that you think should be further along than they are right now. We all in here can attest that we wish that our churches was full every Sunday. Yes, sir. That the impact that we could make in our church, our community, would be something that would be so impactful that people miles and miles around would travel in order to get just a piece of it. Every choir director, minister of music, knows that they desire not just to direct just a couple of people, but to bring people together to sing to the glory of God. I believe is a passion that's on the inside of every minister of music. It is no doubt in my mind that each one of us that faces ministerial administration has to deal with why is this not growing the way I know it can. The truth is, Pastor Cause, is that all of us have been tempted to just follow some seven-step plan. Many of us have been tempted or even tempted to deal with some three steps and it will grow. But the truth is, is that we can preach it, we can teach it, but until we deal with it, it really won't change. The text here says that Elijah is teaching. He, he has a school that is the school of the prophets. 
It means that he is doing something good and people are coming from miles and miles around in order to hear what he has to say, but not only to hear what he has to say, but to also participate in the things that he is teaching them. He is teaching them a skill, a talent, a gifting, how to utilize that which God has anointed them with and bring some type of control to it. It is something that is not original. It is something that, that is not new. For, for, for Elijah is not the only prophet in yeah. town. Yeah. But it seems though, according to the text, that, that his school is growing yeah. a little faster than Johnny come lately school yeah. is down the road. He is dealing with this issue of doing what God has called him to do and people coming to sit at his feet. Uh, the only problem is, is that now it's getting a little too crowded. Uh, the problem is, is that now everybody can't hear the way they used to hear. The truth is, is that everybody is not getting a turn to prophesy like they used to have a turn. In other words, these newcomers are coming in and now we have to somehow figure out uh, where they fit and where we fit. Right. The truth is, is that all of us that deal with this type of challenge uh, is something that, that, that when we deal with it, it really puts us in an uncomfortable position. And we try to figure out what do I do with this growth. Yeah. It really leads me to benefit number one, and that is when capacity is the challenge. Yeah. The truth is, is that many of us have to deal with this issue of capacity. Capacity by definition is the maximum amount that something can contain. In other words, if you have a 12 ounce cup and pour 12 ounces of water in it, then it is filled to capacity. No, no matter if you want more, no matter if you want 13 or 14 or 15 ounces, if 12 ounces is the maximum capacity of the cup, uh, no matter how much you want to pour in it, uh, it means that you can't pour anything else uh, unless something is going to escape. Uh, it is this capacity issue. It's what we can handle. It's what we can take. Uh, it's what we are meant to deal with. It's what we are meant to uh, be. It is what we are built for. However, capacity is not just the amount that one can contain. Capacity also means the amount that something can produce. In other words, capacity is a two-way street. It's not that you can just receive it, but the capacity is also how much you can produce. I come to tell somebody here today that for many of our ministries, we have come to the capacity that we do not feel as though that we can take anymore, and we don't feel as though we can give out anything else. Let me just bring it a little closer to home. The reason why I don't believe that we believe that we can produce more is because we keep singing the same song. We, we keep praying the same prayers. That, that, that we only believe God for what has already been. As if we're telling God, God, this is all that we can handle and this is all that we're able to produce. The only thing they're going to get out of me is one hour on Sunday morning. The only thing they're going to get out of me is 45 minutes in a Bible study. The only thing they're going to get out of me is for me playing two or three songs a Sunday. The only thing they're going to get out of me is me taking communion to two people and then that's it. The only thing they're going to get out of me me is this, that, or the other. It's when we limit God and when we began to limit God, you are not telling God just what you will not do. What you're really saying is this is all the capacity that I have. I come to ask somebody here tonight, I wonder is there anybody here that's made up in your mind, Lord, if you pour more in me, I'll pour more out. The only reason why that you can only take what you can take is because when God fills you up, you never pour yourself out. That's why Paul said, I want to present myself like a drink offering. 
doctrine that if he fills me up, I want to be able to pour myself out. Deliver me from the people that only want God to fill you up, but you don't want to give anything back to God. Deliver me from the people that will only say, Lord, give me, give me, but you will never give anything to the Lord. Deliver me from the people that always want a word from the Lord, but never want to produce a word to somebody else. Deliver me from the people that always want God to bless them financially but they won't tie. Bless me uh, with this and uh, bless me with that uh, but we will not utilize the resources that we have to be a blessing to the Lord. Somebody ought to be in the house uh, that says the place where we are right now is too small. It ought to be something ought to be something on the inside of you that tells your pastor, pastor, we can do more. It ought to be something on the inside of you that tells the leadership of your church, uh, I want to give you the permission to dream bigger, to, to the ask God, what else is it that you would have us to do? Uh, it should not be uh, Elijah always coming up with the thought uh, that the place is too small, uh, but it ought to be the people that are raising up uh, to say, Elijah, the place that we are at right now is too small. As a matter of fact, Elijah had some pastoral, uh, he has some pastoral complications here because for many of us, even as pastors, we are so in love with preaching to a crowd that we do not enjoy the freedom of preaching to empty pews. As a matter of fact, I want you to know years ago, the Lord spoke to me and told us uh, uh, that we we were to enlarge the place that we were in. Uh, it was not that he wanted us to build, but the words that he said to me was make more room. Uh, and I wonder is there anybody here that understands uh, when you begin to make more room, uh, it really means that you got to get used to preaching to something that is not there until something gets there. You got to start learning how to preach to an empty pew uh, until the Lord sends somebody to put in that pew. Uh, and then when the pew gets filled up, you got to make more room. You got to say, Lord, I know we're in this container, but if you give us the strength, if you give us the strategy, if you give us the wisdom, we'll pour it out in order to make room for more. Ministry minded people, listen to me good, ministry minded people oftentimes run out of room. Let me say that again. I said ministry minded people often run out of room. They said the place that we are in right now is too small. And I want to declare over this house to this association of churches, it's not just your physical space that is too small, but it's your mental space. It's your vision. It's your mission. It's your offering baskets. It's your plea for souls. Uh, the place that you dwell in is too small. Uh, you're too busy and we are oftentimes too busy being, being uh, confined by an order of service. Uh, but who said the altar call had to come after the sermon? Uh, who said that it had to be that way? Uh, maybe God wants to make more room earlier in the service. Uh, who said you had to do it when you're doing it? Uh, why don't you just pour it out uh, and then sit an empty cup before the Lord uh, and say, Lord, if you fill it up again, uh, we'll pour it back out again. Uh, I wish I had a witness right here. What's the use of filling up a food pantry if you ain't gonna give out any food? What's the use of filling out a clothes closet if you're not gonna put clothes on somebody's back? What's the use of having a shoe drive if you're not gonna give out any shoe? Look at somebody and tell them, make more room. Listen, listen to what the Lord said through Isaiah in Isaiah chapter 54, verse number 2. He says, enlarge the place of your tent. Let them stretch out the curtain of your dwelling. 
do not spare. Right. Lengthen your cord and strengthen your stake. The thing I like about this, Pastor Gray, is, is that the Lord does not tell Isaiah how large to tell the people to build the tent. I like this here because what God is really saying is, I'll give you more capacity and I'll let you choose how large you want it to be. I want to talk to somebody here tonight that's tired the tight quarters. I, I want to talk to somebody here tonight uh, that's tired of dealing with small mentalities. Uh, I want to talk to somebody tonight uh, that when you look at the vision uh, and you can say, Lord, I thank you for what you've given, Pastor, but I'm interceding from my pastor. I need my pastor to make more room uh, in order that we can deal with the issues and the ills, the social determinants uh, of our community. Uh, is there anybody here that understands you already know how to have church. You ought to teach somebody that ain't ever been to church. You already know how to sing on the choir. You ought to get some crackheads together and let them know that even in your loneliest state, God can still bring glory out of your life. You already know how to have a potluck dinner. You might as well bring some folk in that don't have a place to eat and say we're already full. But if you come our way, we'll see share bread with you. We'll break bread together. And guess what? The New Testament church says uh, that they went to everybody's house and daily they broke bread together and the Lord added to the church. Uh, the reason why the Lord isn't adding to many of our churches uh, is because we are not opening up the doors. Uh, we are not going to their house. Uh, God didn't say you gotta come to my house. Uh, the church grows when you go to the All right, all right, all right. Let me give you, let me give you some things that's going to help us with ministry expansion. Benefit number two: four things you need for ministry expansion. The first thing you need is perspective. Somebody shout perspective. Perspective is a view with evaluation. In other words, it's the vision, it's the attitude, it's the point of view, watch this, it's the dimensions uh, that deal with capacity. The dimensions of capacity is the depth and the height and the width. Uh, in other words, it's not a 2D picture, but it's a 3D picture. Uh, uh, the perspective is uh, that I want to see the height and the depth and the width of my God. Uh, in other words, they come to him uh, and they say that the place that we're in is too small. Uh, it wasn't that they just had this perspective that it was too small, uh, but then they move to this thing called permission to perform. And can I help somebody here with permission to perform? It means that they went to him and said, may we do this. I want to talk to some members of churches because sometimes you feel as though that if the pastor did not say it, then maybe the Lord is not leading us there. Is there anybody here? Can I just pull the curtain back and just let you know something? As as powerful as your preacher is uh, I promise you your preacher has to deal with church governance uh, and church governance is usually behind closed doors uh, even though the pastor comes out uh, in front of the people let me go a little bit deeper uh, the reason why your pastor sometimes vision is so small uh, is because he or she has not been given the freedom I didn't say permission I said the freedom to operate in the things that are really of God. The thing is, is that if we can lead like Jesus led, we never see Jesus asking the disciples, should we do this? Can we do this? Jesus always asks the disciple, what will it take for us to feed all of these people? It was then that the council was not meant to give vision, but the council was meant to give the provision of freedom 
to say uh, we'll come up with the answer. Tap somebody and tell your neighbor we'll come up with the answer. How we gonna feed the hungry? We'll come up with the answer. How we gonna clothe the naked? We'll come up with the answer. Look at the children. We'll come up with the answer. What are we gonna do about after school program? We'll come up with the answer. I wish I had some come up people in the house. Uh, come up people are not people that just come in and sit like a bump on a log. Uh, but come up people say, uh, I have a mind that God has given unto me. I have creative thought that God has placed down in my heart. Uh, and pastor, if you give us permission to perform, uh, we can go down to the Jordan uh, and we all can cut down a tree. Uh, and when we cut down the tree, uh, we can build a bigger place. I wish I had a witness right here. Uh, the permission to perform uh, is not should we do it. Uh, it is this is how we can get it done. Uh, and is there anybody here that understand uh, that when they told Elijah the plan, uh, Elijah said, well, go on with your bad self. Uh, he says, you can go. Uh, but listen to what he also said. Uh, he say, said, let us go. Let us cultivate. Uh, and then let us dwell. Uh, I got to get out of here in a minute. Uh, but then Elijah gives to them uh, prophetic protection. Uh, look at somebody and tell them prophetic protection. Uh, he said, Listen here, Pastor. Listen, if we go, we don't want to go by ourselves. Uh, they look at Elijah and say, uh, Listen, here is something about your covering. Uh, it's something about your teaching. Uh, it's something about your leadership. Uh, it's something about your hand. Uh, it's something about your voice. Uh, it's something about your mantle. Uh, it's something that's on you uh, that we need on us. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, the only reason we are the best us uh, is because because you are the best you and we need to know will you go with us in other words we know we can do it but if you go with us we know that the gift will still be flowing we know we can go and build a building but if you go with us then we know that people will keep coming notice him they were all in the place and they say with the people that we have right now the place is too small but if we build a bigger place and if you come with us watch this it will not stop the growth that we are experiencing right now I wish I had about 150 people in here that would make up in your mind that tonight or tomorrow you will get in contact with your pastor and let your pastor know we are with you and as long as we're together we can expand what God has given unto us they need it prophetic protection. He looks at them and tells them I will go with you. But then the Bible says they are down at the Jordan. They are chopping down trees. And the Bible says that a man is chopping down a tree and when he roars it back that the iron axe head comes off the pole and it falls down in the water. Listen here. Not only do we need a good perspective not only do we need permission to perform, not only do we need prophetic protection, but we also need properly working tools. They are cutting down trees. But the tool I want to talk to some churches that Jesus is not your problem but the tools that you're working with that's your problem the tools the tools the tools Benefit number three, and I'm out of here, I'm gonna leave you alone. And that is, we must deal with inadequate tools. First thing I see Dean with this tool is, he says, alas, master, it was borrowed. I wanna let somebody here know that you can't borrow Forever. 
that borrowing is meant to be temporary. Yeah, yeah. And you are trying to use somebody else's tool to do the job that God has called you to do. Yeah. It worked for a while, but now it's broke. The iron axe head fell off. Every Sunday, Dr. Hill, every Sunday, I give my sermon notes out to the church and I give it to the congregation. They fill in the blanks and on Facebook, they put all my sermon notes up and people come by the church and they ask for sermon notes. And somebody asked me one day, they said, Pastor Dogan, you know, do you sell your sermon notes? I said, no, I, I, I give them, I give them away. Somebody said, well, aren't you afraid? That somebody is going to take your sermon <laughs> and preach it at their church. I looked at them emphatically and said, well, they could. <laughs> but is there anybody here that understands? That's my acting. <laughs> you, you, you can borrow it if you want to. But the truth is, is that it ain't going to work for you. Like it works. I wish I had a witness right there. I want to talk to somebody here that understand that they may sing your song, but they can't sing it like you can sing it. Somebody may take your ministry idea, but they can't do it like you can do it. The truth is, it might work for a while, but if they keep on using your borrow tool, I want you to know that one day the proof will be in the pudding and the axe head is going to fall off and they're going to be holding a handle without an axe I got to get ready to get out of here. Is there somebody here that you understand that some people are holding on to a handle with no axe head attached to it. Look at somebody and tell them detached. Look at somebody else and say ineffective. I want you to know that when you have an axe head that is detached, you are detached from effectiveness. You are detached from productivity. It means that you are detached from purpose and progress. In other words, when you are detached, it means that you are detached from the Spirit of God. I don't know about you, but I remember the words that David wrote in Psalms 51, 10, and 11. And he says, create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew in me a steadfast spirit. And do not cast me away from your presence. And listen to what he says. He says, whatever you do, don't take the iron axe in. He, he says, whatever you do, do not take your Holy Spirit away from me. Do I have a witness in the house? The Bible says that the man went to Elijah and said, Alas, Master, I want you to know that my iron axe head and my iron axe was borrowed. The Bible says that Elijah went to the man and said, Where did it fall at? The man walked over and showed Elijah the place that the axe head fell in the water. I need to just stick a pin right here and tell somebody that if you've lost your effectiveness, if you've lost your power, if you've lost your productivity, church, if you've lost the progress that you had, you got to be able to identify where did I lose it at? Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, where did you lose it at? Was it when you tried to be like somebody else? When did you lose 
said? Uh, was it when you stepped away from doing what God called you to do uh, and tried to do what somebody was doing down the street? Uh, was it when you changed your style to try to sound like somebody else? Uh, was it when you were conformed over to the world uh, and you were not transformed by the renewing of your mind? Uh, the Bible says that when he pointed to the place uh, that Elijah took a stick and cut it off uh, and threw it in the water. Now, this is what I want to tell somebody here. Now, the Bible says that when he threw the stick in the water, uh, that the iron axe head uh, floated up to the top. Uh, the Bible says, Pastor Quarles, uh, the Bible says that he made uh, the axe head float. Uh, and I want to tell some pastor here today, uh, I want to tell some minister you know, here today uh, that God is calling you uh, to make iron float. Uh, I know it seems like it's impossible. Uh, I know it seems like it's not going to work. Uh, but God did not call you to the easy thing. Uh, he called you to the difficult thing. Uh, and he called you to the things uh, to cause me to shake their head. Uh, do I have a witness? Uh, is there anybody here uh, that understand uh, praying your child off drugs uh, is not an easy thing, uh, but it's making iron float, uh, causing your marriage to be repaired. Uh, it's not an easy thing, uh, but it's making iron float. Uh, look at your neighbor uh, and say, neighbor, uh, it may be hard, uh, but it's just making iron float. Uh, and I want to tell somebody here today uh, that it's not by might uh, and it's not by power, uh, but it's by his spirit uh, that you can make iron float. Uh, I want you to help somebody. Uh, I want you to take somebody by the hand uh, and say, neighbor, uh, I know it's hard. Uh, it seems impossible, uh, but if you have faith, uh, all things are possible uh, to him that believe. Uh, I'm out of here, uh, but the Bible says uh, that when the iron started to float, uh, that Elijah looked at the iron uh, and he looked at the man uh, and he said to the man, uh, pick it up for yourself. Uh, I need to help somebody here. Uh, if you want it, uh, you can have it uh, if you need it. Uh, it's yours. Uh, it's yours. Uh, but you gotta reach out uh, and you gotta grab it. Uh, you gotta grab it uh, and pick it up yourself. Uh, do I have a witness? Uh, is there anybody here uh, who says thank you, Lord? Uh, I'm getting ready to stretch out. Uh, I'm getting ready to reach for it. Uh, Two or three people and say, neighbor, if you want it, you gotta reach out and grab it. If you want it, you gotta take a risk and stretch for it. If you want it, you have to stretch over water. Somebody said, what I fall in the water? I want you to know if you fall in the water, the same God that made iron float is the same God that can make you float. I wish I had a praying church. Is there anybody here who can say thank you, Lord? I'm getting ready to stretch out. I'm getting ready for expansion. Expand my mind. Expand my vision. Expand my dream. Expand my tent. Do I have a witness? If you a witness today, just wave your arms shut. Reach out for it. Reach out for it. Reach out for it. Pick it up yourself. Pick it up yourself. If you're a witness today, somebody shout yes. Say yes. Say yes. Say yes. One more time. Say yes.
that this association, I pray that you are through with small. You had enough of confinement. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, pray, I pray that you've had enough of tight quarters. I pray that you've had enough of thinking. Living uh -huh. yeah. too small. Yeah. Yes, sir. But you will expand. Yes. 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 I tell every church in the house that if you're at 80% capacity, go to another service. Yeah. Why ask God for 20%? Uh -huh. When you can ask him for a hundred. I pray for every choir director, every minister of music. I pray that if all you have is small, that you'll get permission to perform. That you'll get prophetic protection. So say, Pastor, I believe I'm going to go out and start a community choir. I pray. I pray that God will place inside of each member the ability Look at somebody and tell them to cut down your own tree. I'm through, I'm finished. I want you to come back tomorrow night. As every head is bowed, every eye is closed. Pastor Gray, I, I saw some empty spaces tonight. I'm praying that tomorrow night, that which was empty, that God would add to the place. Countywide revival will be so packed yeah. Yeah. that we have to go to two services a night. Yeah. Anybody got two yeah. services in here? Yes, I believe we can pull off a 5:30 and a 7:30. I, I just believe we can pull it off. I believe it in my heart. I believe it in my heart. Nobody, y'all come to this mic. That the road And I know We to leave One more time, choir. Listen, if you're here and you do not know the Lord, and you have never given your life to the Lord. I want to invite you to give your life to the Lord tonight. You say, Lord, I need you to save me. I need you to redeem me. I need you to repair me and restore me. The altar is empty. It has 100% capacity. I believe God can fill it up. And I don't. Keep
brought me this far to Because if you desire prayer tonight, would you come on down to the altar? I just believe God is going to do something. I believe he's going to do it in this space right here.